What is up, everybody? Circleflex here, bringing you guys another replay cast. This time we're playing the T37, the tier 6 American light tank. Um, basically, after free marking the T67, the tank destroyer tier 5, uh, I put the crew in the Chaffee, free marked that, and now this, the same crew, which is like three or four crew skills, including Bros and Arms, is now in the T37. So, the main advantage of the T37 over all the other scouts is that it has really good pen. But it also also has third steps, just like the Chaffee, and the Chaffee is really rare. I think it's the only tier 5 that has vertical stabilizers. Could be wrong there, but I think it is. And at tier 6, we also have third steps on the T-37, which is really, really nice. So the base pen on the guns is 150 and 199, uh, which is really nice because your main enemy, uh, which is like OIs and stuff like that, if you have the, the APCR, you should have like no issues with that. But... As I said, we're playing the T-37, we are on Live Oaks, and on Live Oaks I usually go south and fight for this flank here, which is pretty nice for a tank like mine. However, my entire team basically, except for the SU and the, I believe it's the Comet, uh, are on the south southern flank here. So I just decided to just ride this wave and just go with it. And it's always a good bush to start things off in. You sh sometimes you can also s uh, spot some TDs on the ridge line there. Or some scouts coming in on this line here. So it's a pretty good s a spot to start in. Uh, obviously I arrived a bit later than usual because I went to the sou southern flank first. But now, because there's nobody on the other flank, I'm like, alright, we just have to win our flank as fast as possible. And that's usually the thing to do on any map. It's just win your flank, make sure you win your flank without too many losses or any losses. And just make sure you win your flank before you head back. Because otherwise you're going to be sandwiched in between uh, two flanks of enemy. And you're basically screwed from that point onwards, usually. So we're just going to pretend to be a heavy tank and fight in the city with our scout. Uh, also, what is noticeable about the tank is that it has almost 700 health. Um... Which is also pretty nice. The only real disadvantage of this tank is that it's huge. Like, if you look at the turret, if you look at the chassis, it's a huge tank. Um, that's really the only the only downside of this tank. Everything else is really good. The fuel race is good. The gun is good. It has first steps, which is awesome. It's a nice and fast, as a light tank should be. So right now we're going to engage the VKP in the KV-13. Now the K-13 can be a bit of a problem still, because those tend to have uh, pretty good hull armor for their tear, but since he's not angling and I'm just shooting lower plate, it's no issue for the 150 pen. See, there we go. There we hit like the upper part of the hull, and that's like an out of bounds with this 150 mil, uh, or 150 mil. I wish it had a 150 mil. That'd be the day. With the 150 uh, millimeters of pen, obviously. So, I'm... I'm being rather cautious here because I also don't want to lose any health so early into the game. Um, pretty much like a lot of the French tanks or like the bat chat, if you want to take it to the extremes. The longer you stay on full health um, during a game, like the more the crazier your, your tank becomes because that was a nice reverse side scrape bounce there on the T-47. Don't expect to bounce anything on these things, but that was rather nice. So now I take one hit because I'm like, alright. Sure, I'll do some uh, I'll do some tanking here because the KB1 didn't really see me inclined to do anything. Take another shot. So this is what you kind of want to avoid. Like you always don't want to get shot at, but scouts get increasingly more lethal as time goes on into the game because they have that few range, because they have that speed, and because they have that camo. And if you, on top of that, add the the fact that you can trade a shot or two. In the end game is really really good especially once you start fighting their sevens and eights and if you're still on full health you can usually you know eat one shot and then dpm them down because your gun reloads that much faster and they're probably going to be wounded near the end game so now we go rt hunting we kill one of them we're already on 1500 damage done here and my team is going back to the base so i'm like right i have to take out the artillery it's kind of my job right now and as you can see, because we won our own flank, they have the time to now move out. If there was still like one or two alive in the city, 
but we'd still be busy there, we would have been out capped, stuff like that. So it's really important to just, if, if your team just goes to one flank, just makes them make the most out of it and just win your own flank as fast as possible. And just help out, even in a scout like uh, I was now. So I did take like one or two unnecessary hits. Like if you take one of those uh, KV-13 hits, it would have been okay-ish. Um, you know, for the time spent there. That was alright. I mean, the KV-1 could have taken the hits, but he wasn't really uh, inclined to do anything about it. So we spot the artillery here. Start loading the AT for the second shot. But that one misses, and I'm going to switch back to AP again. So we're kind of losing right now. It's 9, nine versus 11. They have a couple more tanks than us, but we are in better positions. And one of our RT actually killed somebody there up close, the E25. Which is, uh, well, they're one of the only tier 7s they had left, so that's really good for us. The KV-1 starts capping. I mean... <laughs> not really... Sh like, he. that's probably the best thing he could have done. Uh, I mean, he could have gone from the city back to our base in the first place. It would have probably been better for us, but... It's whatever. So we take out the artillery. Uh, obviously, you saw him aiming at the other side because he knew he was spotted. So I take, take the other route. And he didn't expect that. So I basically just outmaneuver him. So I've got to be careful here because they still have a Nashorn and a Cromwell and the Type 64. But the Type 64 just got spotted at D4, so I'm not worried about them there. So I'm going through the bushes here. And then we spot the Nashorn and the Cromwell. They're both capping, which is rather nice for me. Actually, the Nashorn is not even in the cap, but he was near the cap, let's say. And that last hit was really nice with the 18, doing almost 180 damage. He gets taken out by the own knee, of all things. He gets sniped by the own knee. So the Cromwell comes in. And this is where a huge difference is. The Cromwell doesn't have first steps. It has a really good gun. It's probably one of the best tier 6s. Uh, tier 6 mediums for sure. Uh, but in general, the Cromwell is one of the most lethal tier 6s I can, uh, I can come up with. But we make sure we use a lot of our cover in bushes. So I'm like spotted like half, half of the time here. And without the first steps, he's not that effective. And because I'm moving pretty minimal, and plus the first steps, I can put shots after shot into him. So the grill is also still alive. Now, I'm making a run for it to go for, through the zero line here. Um, but in reality, the grill could have been in J0 as well. I didn't really check there at all. But the grill is right in front of us. And he misses the shot. Thank God. How many times have we died <laughs> due to this stuff? We take him out with two shots again, you know, the first steps help out so, so much. It's really, really nice. So the OD made it all the way back. And now we're like, alright, there's nobody at the base, we're two of us. What are we gonna do? There's one Type 64 alive. So basically what I have to do now is just escort the Oni to their base. And then we can start camping. Because there's no way in hell that I'm, I can find a Type 64 reliably on this map. And there's also no way in hell that the Oni will spot a Type 64 before he gets spotted. And now, whilst the Oni is really well armored, if the Type 64 gets into a good spot, or gets around him or alongside him, the Oni is pretty screwed. So I just decided to just stick with him. So I go from bush to bush, basically scouting ahead in front of the Oni, trying to get to the Type 64. And if we spot the Type 64, sure, I can go for him, but... He also is still on full health as far as I know, which means that even if he just trades really ineffectively and trades blow for blow, I just die because I already lost half my health. But what ends up happening, and I'm going to just speed up the replay a little bit here, is that the Type 64 just never shows up. He just never shows up, so I'm just escorting the Oni as much as possible here while trying to stay in cover. Thinking like, alright, the type is either gonna, he's either gonna, you know, try and cap us out, but we were two people, so here I avoid the cap circle as well. And then I go to another, so what I'm thinking here is, is that he probably went back to his own base, and is going around again. So I'm just taking the most obvious spot I can here, behind a bush, and that's about it. The type 64 just never shows up, and we did over 3,000 damage, would like to... You know, to have the top gun, but, you know, the limiting factor here is our time. And that's about it. And then we win the game. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a quick look at the post-game sets here. 
All right, so quick look at the post stats here. Obviously, base. We got a Pasquistis for killing all three artillery in the enemy team. Uh, we set the KV-13 on fire, so we got Arsonists as well. Uh, base XP is, is almost 1,500, doing over 3,000 damage, basically carrying the game alongside the Tiger and no knee. Um, versus, basically, their type did really well. Uh, 1,600, over 900 damage. You know, he got to defend the metal for the KV-1. Uh, it's a shame he didn't show up in the end, because I would have liked to pick up the, the, the Top Gun as well. And we end up making 30k credits. I think we shot a little bit of premium in the end, but uh, we fired away almost... Well, definitely all our HE and almost all of our AP, I think. Um, so yeah, pretty nice game. And the crazy thing about these scouts as well is that this game was like... Uh, I think 15,000 W8, according to my replay analyzer program thing. So uh, pretty nutty, but that's, you know, scouts in a nutshell. If you're, if you're really hungry to get some W8, you should probably be playing like tier 6 scouts all day. Yeah, pretty nice result and pretty nice matchmaking being in tier 7 uh, with a tier 6 scout. Obviously, is really, really nice. And uh, if you haven't played the T-47 yet and you're close to it, I do recommend playing it. It's probably one of the better tier 6s out there. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this little replay. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.